to the Mr. Investor Channel. My name is Ryan. I'm throwing down on another update here. We just closed out 2021, which has been a dismal year for highly on holdings. We all know that. Um, no, no secret there. I, I think it's important to understand some of the trends that we saw in 2021 uh, as we closed out an extremely dismal year. And you would think that uh, um, everybody just be throwing their hands up and throwing this thing in the dumpster where I think a lot of people um, sentiment being as low as I, I think I've I've seen it. Um, what does that mean? What does my pulse about the sentiment mean right now with regard to where the stock is going into 2022? Nothing. And I could be dead wrong on my sentiment. There could be things going on behind the scenes at Highly on Holdings um, that I'm not privy to uh, because um, I scour the open source for news information, and it's been pretty lean the last couple months. Okay, what does that mean? Does it mean because there's a lack of information from my perspective that, number one, I'm right, or number two, that I need to somehow change my thesis about Hylion Holdings and my stock position because of that observation? Of course not. I'm going to give you some statistics that might be an eye opener and the independent investor channel maintains our $24 price target. Uh, I started doing this because um, I don't trust anybody anymore. Uh, I trust myself. Um, you can disagree with me. No problem. You can think I'm off base. Ryan, you're not an analyst. No, I'm not. And I don't put people on a pedestal. And, and that's one reason why I, you know, what does expert mean anymore? Um, I'm in a field of experts, and it's amazing to me how many people are deemed experts because they carry around a certificate with them that says that they've been tried, true, and tested, tested with an emphasis on test, uh, to carry around a certificate and be deemed a professional uh, or an expert because they've been able to pass a test. I think discretion goes a long way with me. And I think uh, for myself and my small entity on Cornerstone Capital Solutions, which is my LLC, uh, and the independent investor channel, uh, and the audience that I represent, they know I don't have an agenda. Um, for full disclosure, I am a stock owner in the company, and um, um, I don't do this for, for any other reason than to provide awareness uh, on a stock that I feel right now um, is in the moment of truth. We'll talk about it a little bit. Let me throw some statistics at you to validate my $24 price target in 2022. We will meet that price target. Um, when we approach that price target, I will increase it again uh, more toward the $50 level. But we have to get out of this moment of truth phase right now. The supply chain is hurting the stock. Obviously, a short interest of 20% in the, in the, the, the short term doesn't help things with regard to the price action and momentum because there's just not enough buyers right now that are stepping in. Um, or, or are there? As we look at 2021 and we look at the statistics, I was uh, amazed um, at the level of institutional buyers that had stepped in. Now, Q3, the buying, uh, digressed a little bit to $11 million bought alone in Q3 compared to $1.62 million. So uh, about 10x, uh, actually about 5x, 6x on the uh, buy side to the uh, sell side on highly on stock just in Q3 alone. Well, how did we shake out for the year? This was inst institutional ownership sat at about 28%. 28.5% right at the end of 2021. They own uh, close to 30% of the total share float. Um, there were 97 buyers in 2021, and those buys uh, accumulated or accounted for 329 million compared to the 29 sellers in 2021, cumulatively accounting for 24 million uh, shares sold in 2021. So 329 million compared to 29 million on the sell, uh, 24 million on the sell side. Um, so pretty interesting when we start to look at who is panicking right now and who is accumulating. Well, it's the same old story as usual, where you've got YouTubers that, and I, I feel depressed too. I mean, these are hard-earned dollars. These institutions have millions of dollars to invest. Um, I don't. Um, I'm a retail investor. Where I look at $1,000, and an institution looks at a million dollars with the same lens. 
So it's a little bit different investing on behalf of um, an organization as opposed to myself who is advocating and investing on behalf of myself. Does that need to change the perspective? In other words, do the institutions have, uh, do they know something that we don't know or is it just a different perspective when we approach how it is we get involved with a company like Hylion Holdings and look to hold it true to maturity? Are we in maturity right now? Absolutely not. What, the stock price is at about as dismal of a level as I have seen it. Um, the moment of truth could last for two weeks. It could last for six months. I have no idea. But this is the moment of truth. What I mean by that is, will we reflect on this time period where Hylion Holdings was trading under $6 a share with the prospects that I believe that the companies had? Okay, we're going to get into a few things, a few updates, a few perspectives that I think will really understand, help you understand that if you got caught up in the retail investor perspective, you would have sold a long time ago. I mean, there's YouTubers out there, you know, um, Rat Pack Stocks is one of my favorites. It's one of the few channels that I watch um, highly on coverage at all. But the admission last, uh, at the end of last year, that Paul was really going to be scrutinizing the stock price over the next three months um, is, is um, of interest to me um, because I know he's been in and out of the stock. Now, myself and Paul have different applications and you want to know something, that's all right. I think we need to get over this whole like you're right and I'm wrong type of philosophy because at any time in the stock market, the stock market and your application can prove you wrong or prove you right at any given time. It really is just a, a timing issue. The thing about it is when, when investors are tuning into a message and they don't know squat about investing in the first place nor do they understand what elevated thought and perspective needs to enter into a speculative position like Heine Hylion, who's putting up donuts in the revenue category as of late. I think that will change um, as early as this February up, uh, upcoming Q4 report. I believe that's going to change. I believe that they're going to start to transition um, some of these EX sales that they are, in fact, making. I'm going to talk about that a little bit. And I think that transition is going to happen. But these investors who were ill prepared to enter into this tune in and they think that it's OK to justify a stock position across the board in a three month time period. I think that's a fallacy. And it's, it's just it's just my opinion that what I've contended from in, in the in the beginning for me, not for you and not for anybody else out there is that if you were going to own Hylion Holdings and you were interested in the technology and the direction of the company, the only solution to see it through to the maximum amount of profits is to own the stock, not to buy or sell the stock, but to own the stock. There's a big difference in application here. I revolve around this topic all the time, and I think a lot of people assume a lot of things about me with regard to my stock disposition. And, and, and the position that I hold and how I build the position or trim back the position at my disposal, that's my business. And my application is mine and mine alone. What provides value to shareholders is to understand that I'm transparent about those moves. When I come on and I, I discuss what it is that could potentially make sense, does it make sense to take a position in the stock right now, sub six, when I'm forecasting that it could be over 20, could it be a prudent move to wait until it hits 20, assuming that they get a little bit of floor underneath of them and that they're going to build this thing out for the next 10 years. And it's going to be irrelevant from 5 to 25 that you had to catch the bottom in the stock, rather take the appreciation from 25 to 250, right? So there's a lot of different schools of thought, and there's nobody that's right and wrong in this game. But I do want to give a shout out, and I don't do this very often, and I do want to, I want to do it within the first few minutes of filming this video, within the first 20 minutes. Um, I do want to give a shout out to Drive Mix Game. Dexter's throwing down. He's under a thousand subscribers. We need to get him up at least above that thousand subscriber mark to 
um, allow for his monetization, uh, monetization to kick in. Um, and, and also just really from my perspective as a thank you for the information. Um, from a truck driver's perspective, it is invaluable to me personally, and I, I, I don't want to speak for others, but I will give an uh, undertone of appreciation for what I think is a very, very appreciated and well-timed message from a perspective that we are not being offered from Highly on Holdings. Dexter is filling that gap. Now, whether or not he likes that or not, I, I don't know. But on behalf of the channel, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. If I could give you 10,000 of my subscribers, I would, man. I, 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 I just, I, I don't judge channels uh, in that manner. But right now, with what he's providing as a supplement niche to the landscape right now that is somewhat dry on information, unfortunately, Dexter's really filling that gap, at least for me. There's been two things that have come out. Really enjoy his perspective. Very honest guy. He's very forward. Um, and you can tell. You can tell the sincerity is there. And I, I, I just I cannot advocate enough. So I will put the link in the comments section to Drive Mix Game. Take three seconds. Click over there. Hit the subscribe button. Help him in his mission to provide some very, very invaluable um, information from the field. And I'll tell you why that's invaluable here in just a second. There is a lot of comments and opinions out there on the landscape about what this company can and can't do. I think in the category of it can't is being proven wrong in the field right now. They're just having a hard time getting that information out to investors. So there is an undertone of what is going on in reality and what is perceived to be reality by the stock market and especially the stock price at these recessed and anemic levels. These are laughable. They're absolutely laughable. So I do want to give a shout out to Dexter with Drive Mix Game. Kick over there and subscribe. The thing that I picked up is on the very end. There was two comments made. Number one, he opened the hood and he showed the Cummins uh, V engine, which is a CNG engine. It turns out about 400 horsepower. Now with the hybrid system that was installed on it, the E-axle, uh, on the EX system that he just picked up, he just took ownership of the trucks within the last two weeks, um, adds another 120 horsepower. Now, wait a minute. What I don't understand is how can you couple an existing Cummins CNG engine with the hybrid uh, EX product? I thought that the Cummins CNG engine, the new one that they've got coming out, is going to totally render the EX hybrid, at least on the CNG side, obsolete. And I tweeted to Thomas Healy, he needs to stop talking about this EX product as if it's going to fall on its face. And I don't know if it's some sort of like um, chess move or some sort of overthinking in his lack of strategy on this front, but you do not do that on an earnings call, nor do you double down on an interview to say, we're monitoring our competition closely. You know, industry is more interested in the hyper truck ERX when you've dumped millions of dollars into research and development to get the hybrid product up into not only a developed and approved stage, but a stage that it's actually in the fleet's hands. And they are enjoying the benefits of, yes, the Cummins engine and the E axle to add that extra horsepower. Remember, they're hauling frack sands uh, down there in the uh, lower Texas area. They need that extra horsepower. So in that specific application, the product works beautifully and they need to start focusing on the, the, the actual real world application. So I'm not sure if I understand the, the strategy behind basically waving the white flag. I don't understand that a bit. Maybe I understand more about the application. And I think Thomas Healy is smart enough to understand that this product does have a place, but they don't need to lead on in the public marketplace that this product may in fact not find its place because we have some competition from a CNG engine out there that is unproven. And from Dexter's perspective as a truck driver will not be a game changer at all. Furthermore, it will not impact those fleets out there that want to put the E-axle in to actually do what it was, was intended to do. And that's increase on the horsepower that is traditionally turned out or the lack thereof on traditional CNG applications. 
his point was you can run dual systems at the same time. I thought it was beautiful. Nobody talks about this. I would love to see this come out from Hylion and be like, this is our beef. Here it is. This is what we're able to do for fleets. But they're just not doing that right now for whatever reason. There's a lot of Loctite secrecy. We got that intent from when Dexter went to go pick up his hyper truck or his hybrid system. And uh, that may be for good reason. I, I, I take that um, as a grain of salt. And I, I don't know if it's just, you know, because they've got so much proprietary IT that they're looking to, excuse me, um, uh, intellectual property uh, IP that they're looking to protect because they are in their infancy stage. So they're taking it very, very conservative with regard to the information that they're putting out, um, or they just don't have information. I don't know. It could be either scenario. But the second thing that was talked about is the Hypertruck ERX, man, which he talked about the tandem e-axle when he was there at Hylion. He was given that information. I don't know it was the slip, but I'll, I'll share it with you guys for anybody that did not pick up on that. The Hypertruck ERX is going to start to turn out 650 horsepower. So for some of the folks out there that absolutely need to see some sort of validation that these trucks can haul heavy loads, Dexter provides that to you. He drives that in a Fraxans application every single day. Thomas Ely has talked about it all the time, how the EX product leverages into the capability of the Hypertruck ERX. So where it is implied, the 520 horsepower can be garnered on the CNG Cummins engine coupled with the Hylion EX uh, E-axle to provide that extra 120, total 520 horsepower. But that extra torque and payload capacity is not going to be able to be realized with the Hypertruck ERX iteration with the tandem E axle and the 650 plus horsepower uh, of power. Come on, guys, facts are facts, and opinions and conjectures, especially, are just that. Let's be careful with the latter and focus on the actual uh, facts of what they're looking to do with their myriad of products that they're looking to turn out. Okay. Uh, in their product offerings. Number two, I, I want to talk about the coffee mug incident. Um, I was pretty furious and I lit Twitter up pretty well. Um, thank you for you guys that actually do follow me. If you do not follow me on Twitter, you need to go over there because I try to provide that voice. But if I'm getting three or four likes per tweet, I'll stop doing that. I hate Twitter. Twitter is a sacrificial lamb for me. Okay. I am a voice of reason to put direct comms right in front of Hylion. Now, I will go so far as to say that I don't think Hylion monitors that, that feed. I don't. I have yet to get a response from Thomas Healy. Thomas Healy's minions over at Hylion.com, Investor Relations, and I hope this changes over time. But Twitter, as a $1 billion company, I don't see why it's that big of a deal to throw a bone through Twitter every now and then. I think it comes back to the secrecy portion, and they don't want to say the wrong thing at the wrong time. With that said, when I put a tweet out there that challenges the notion that we need to be talking about coffee mugs at this particular juncture, when retail investors are suffering, absolutely getting obliterated, institutional investors own the same damn stock. They're suffering just the same in the tone, tune of millions and millions of dollars. And to come out and talk about a where's Waldo type of perspective based on a standing joke that was made a year ago and somehow I'm the bad guy for questioning whether or not that is uh, 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 done with some uh, um, um, credence and, 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 and due timing, and we're all supposed to laugh about that? I'm sorry, I won't play ball. Um, and, and I challenge the notion of anybody that says that that was somehow a justified thing to do. Look, there's a time and a place. When this stock hits $100 and you wanna throw a joke like that out, no problem. But what it does when the stock is sub six, it shows that you are out of touch with what is going on in the marketplace. And I don't know if he's just completely naive to it or had a lapse of, of, of judgment on his part to think that somehow that was going to garner anything other than a negative backlash through the social media community. And I know there's people out there that disagree. Hey, you can't take a joke, Ryan. You're, you're this, you're that. I'm a shareholder in, in Hylion too. I own 150 shares. Good for you. 
okay? Maybe the level of my reaction is maybe indicative of the sheer accumulation that I've built over the last 18 months. And maybe you should take some credence to that, okay? If you own 150 shares and you're down $300 in the stock, I'm really sorry for you. That, that's terrible luck. But me as a shareholder, I take that stuff seriously. And if their perspective and their focus right now is focused on idiotic stuff like that, I'm going to have a problem with that and I'm going to speak up. So you need to kick over and you need to follow me on Twitter, man. When I put that crap out, upvote that or whatever you got to do, retweet it or, or hit the like button. Like I said, I hate Twitter. Um, hell, part of me hates YouTube as well. But I come on and I share my opinion openly with you guys because I think there's merit and I think there's value in discussing these things on what's going on right now. And they wonder why the stock price is in the absolute shitter right now. Go figure. Let's talk about the stock specifically. Right now, I find it interesting with regard to the stock action per day. It's a drift. There's nothing fundamentally that has changed with the company outside of the announced on the Q3 that the supply chain issues would be affecting their business and their ability to ramp up uh, a little bit more mass scale uh, when they wanted to. It's going to delay that time cycle a little bit, which I think the stock has rolled off and it's, it's, it's basing right here. Um, it's been a slow drift down, which is indication to me that nothing has really changed. Um, there's a lot of talk. Well, is the stock going to one? I don't know. I can play that game all day. Is the stock going to 30 cents? Is it going to go through a reverse stock split? I can play that game all day. Um, my, my opinion has been known. I made it known at the top of the live stream. It's going to $24 in 2022. And, and that's because I see value where a lot of these analysts that are tied into an agenda, not necessarily looking into um, the granular uh, potential of a company like Hylion pre-revenue, it's a target, right? And it's a target to be accumulated. I just talked to you about the institutional accumulation in 2021. Institutions are buying. They are not selling, okay? I think the mass per percentage, and there's no way to track this, the mass majority of the people who are selling Hylion right now are the 50 share, 100 share, 500 share, 1,000 share and below positions held by retail investors. Mark my word. I would bet my life on it. I bet you I'm right. The majority, if you flip-flop these statistics and you looked at the amount of institutional buying going on in 2021, I'll bet you there was an equally and inversible uh, percentage of retail investors that were dumping shares because it's too much or they've owned it for three months and they're out and, and or the, you know, the, the, the word on the landscape or the sentiment is bad. Therefore, I have to sell, right? Okay. It requires something of you that you may or may not possess in your ability to hold when it is beyond the point of insanity. Okay. And whether or not we're there now, I don't know. We'll know in the future when we reflect back on this time and say, gosh, I remember when it was 585, and I remember Ryan coming on when nobody was brave enough to come on and talk about the stock price as recessed as it was, potentially being, I don't know, one of your two options. The two, the second being to sell. You always have the option to say, I got to dump the stock. I, I can't take this anymore. I'm losing sleep. I'm over it. I'll talk about my perspective at the end of this. Well, what about the potential of buying? What about the potential of buying? My brother just picked up 40 shares. I said, Ryan, I'm not, a, I'm not a stock guy. You know, I'm an electrician. I'm busy. I work 20 hours a day. I don't have time for it. But I love the idea. I'm going to throw 40 shares in there. What's the harm in doing that? What's the harm in starting to actually buy right now as opposed to buying into that inverse that I talked about? And I really do blame retail investors. And this will not change. No matter what I say, retail investors will always bear the brunt of it, 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 transactions like this, where you've got a phenomenal company and a phenomenal idea that is poised to revolutionize the industry. The second quote from Dexter's video is that the Hypertruck ERX is going to revolutionize the industry. The Hypertruck ERX is going to revolutionize the industry. He went on to pay credence to the retail investors and the people that tune into his channel and the people who know this about Hylion Holdings and that are bullish about this thesis going forward, um, that we already know this, uh, and we, we, we do. 
we, we've all, we've known it for years. That's why my price target holds firm at twenty four dollars here to get it up to about that eighteen nineteen mark, and then we can go ahead and revise to the upside. I'll be the only one. Um, I just want to leapfrog and be ahead of all these so called analysts that call themselves analysts that have so much attention on a company that is pre revenue that if they thought that the company wasn't going to uh, come to fruition, why focus on it? Why not focus on those companies that are easier to value with metrics that are um, able to forecast in bottom line earnings, revenue forecasts, product moat and acceptance, things like that? Why put so much focus on it? It's because that they're, they're buying. I, I just disclosed to you what is actually going on. The facts in 2021 are undisputed. The institutions are accumulating this to the tune of $329 million of capital inflow into Hylion Holdings in 2021. What side of the coin do you want to be on? You want to tune into a Yahoo thread and get your financial advice from there? Go ahead. Good luck. You'll fail. Okay. I, I've stopped tuning into that thread because it's toxic. It's toxic. I don't know. Social media is a great platform for people who deserve to be in a cave their entire life to crawl out of that said cave and spread their toxic garbage to the world. Um, and I'm going to go back in there when this thing hits 100, and I'm going to invite every single one of them to come and talk to me directly. Uh, on the independent investor channel live stream that I'm going to run for 24 hours straight. And I'm going to give them an opportunity to come on and, and then give their piece. They can give their bearish conviction on the company um, when it's at $100 and it's got a $16 billion valuation on the company. Anonymous, I'm coming for you, man. Really. It, it, whatever rock you crawled out from behind, honestly, man, you will have your day with me. You will have your day with me. And you're not going to be able to be anonymous. My name is Ryan. I run the Independent Investor Channel, and I come on and I subject my stock evaluation and conviction to scrutiny. You, like a bitch, call yourself anonymous and hide underneath of your rock until somebody kicks it over and you go find another rock to hide behind. The Yahoo thread allows for those opportunities for people to crawl out from under the rocks and from within their caves and spread toxicity to people who may buy into it. I have people that go in there all the time and they're like, should I do this or should I do that? Um, you need to not be uh, investing if that's where you're seeking your information from. All right. Sentiment is about as low as we can possibly get on the stock. Um, I do consider this to be kind of a moment of truth for the company. Um, we're about a month away, month and a half away from the Q4 earnings call um, when revenue was promised to investors. Um, my expectation is zero. My expectation of the stock is zero. I think the only pedigree or the only application that is prudent at this point is to allow for more time and to hold the stock true. That's what I'm going to do. I continue to be a stock owner. Easy decision, right? But my expectations for Q4, this company has do not done nothing to, to prove to me um, that their earnings call, now they can prov uh, provide a uh, uh, catalyst to the upside for sure. Um, but their earnings calls have been terrible. They've been horribly written. The only person that I love to listen to is Sherry Baker, to be honest with you. Uh, and the prepared remarks from Thomas Healy, they need to clean that crap up. They do. Um, there's certain things that just do not need to be said. They just don't. Um, Sherry Baker's on point. She's done this before. She's a professional. She's absolutely fantastic. And she's the one through action that I actually give uh, proper credence and acknowledgement to. Um, on, honestly, if she runs this company in 10 years, um, I'll, I'll be happy, happier for it because she, she's an absolute, she is an absolute savage, no doubt about it. Proper credence to, uh, to Sherry. Uh, some perspective on the stock is probably in order. I think you guys need to understand. Um, I put these out and these will come out weekly now um, because when the stock goes to eight, nine dollars and everybody's like, it's time, buy, jump in to the moon. That's when I stop making highly on videos. But when those people die down and they stop talking about it being a time to buy, when it's actually potentially a time to buy in the moment of truth, um, that's when I shine, when nobody else is talking about it. Hence the name, Independent Investor. You guys will get a sense to me that thinking uh, 
independently and individually uh, outside of uh, popular opinion is going to be the difference in your life, no matter what the hell you do, no matter what you do. Um, my perspective is very, very simple. I work very hard. I take care of children. Uh, and I look to satisfy my wife at every turn, every turn. Now, those, those three things right there are the tops of my priority list, okay? If you think for a second, my perspective on highly on holdings, um, as large it, it, as it is in my portfolio, and it holds a high place in my slice of financial perspective, has anything to do with my real perspective about being a happy person and, and being a very healthy person and working out and, and keeping my focus where I need it to be, work, my kids, and satisfying my wife at every turn. That is my God-given directive. And that's an impulse to you guys that you can take to the bank. And you think that it's going to change my disposition and conviction on the company within three months? Because, because why? Because we make up conjectures about the company that aren't true. We make up things and we start to read into why they don't have a Wegmans deal right now. It's not, not in my realm of perspective. Uh, I feel like it's a luxury to be able to invest in a company like this because it's off a couple bits from its IPO price of ten dollars. Ten fifty is where I put the this this stock. If I could have bought it at ten fifty and it just would have held true this entire time and not ran to fifty eight dollars, I think we would be so much better off right now. I would go so far as to say that that twenty four dollar price target would, would, is would be where we are right now because all of the good news would have had a chance not to be mitigated. Uh, but to be actually uh, promoted correctly uh, because the, the share price didn't have a chance to just run to the moon and, and, and get uh, overinflated on the onset. And, and so now all that good news has, has been really kind of taken out and deflated from the stock price right now. Uh, and they're in kind of a lull period. So it's kind of a double whammy uh, against the stock. But man, have some perspective on this deal. Super, super important. If you're concerned about it or you think you're going to lose sleep over it, don't invest. But a 100 share stake right now is going to cost you a little less than $600, guys. $600 to get involved in the ground floor of a company that's looking to revolutionize the trucking industry and go after an $800 billion market, that of which if they could get a point or a point and a half or, or dare I say 2% of the market. Now, Dexter says they're going to dominate the market. Now, dominate the market as far as I'm concerned and what's going to mean for my stock price is if they can garner 2% of market share, we're in the money. We've got our $16 billion company. We're there. It's just that simple. But are there going to be the potential for fleets, at least even globally, when this thing really starts to take fire and the domino effect starts to take place, um, whether or not this thing has a real chance of really scaling up to something special? 30, 40, 50 billion dollar company. And it can, it absolutely can. Um, the, the potential is there, just need to get this technology validated and, and start on the road to that mass scale up and, and, and potential. Um, number five, really cool. I, I do wanna mention that um, that comment about the Hypertruck ERX will dominate. Um, they were working on it in the shop there at the time Dexter went in there and picked it up. I thought that was a, a cool, cool insight um, that I would have never been privy to um, because they're, they're working on it now. And I don't know if that was open for disclosure. I don't really know. Um, I doubt it. Um, if they're that hush hush on everything, um, no big deal. But, um, you know, he just happened to share that with everybody. So, you know, in, in, in perspective, I, I want everybody to understand that I consider this to be the moment of truth. Okay. Um, it could change in a week. It could change in a day. This thing has the ability to shoot up 10% in a day no problem, and, and kind of start that shift from a basing position here um, at around $6 a share. Um, I don't think there's been anything violent with regard to drawdowns outside of the drawdown that was uh, incurred right after the Q3 earnings report. So nothing really to be concerned about as far as that goes. I think the slow drift down has been just by nature of what's going on in the EV space in general. Um, I think really everybody is is kind of on a dumpster fire. Uh, I, I think for some people, I've been deemed a Nikola hater. So that's great too. That's awesome. It's awesome how we'll come out and defend a company like that that was built on false pretenses and comments that were made on the onset 
to garner hype um, in the open market. And now all of a sudden they're on the up. Uh, I find that hard to believe. And, and like my scrutiny is somehow not warranted on the company because they chose to take those paths previously. Sorry. Again, I won't play ball with that, man. My money's with highly on holdings, man. Um, they've got a great thing going, looking to electrify the class eight space here going forward. Guys, if you appreciate the message, I want to invite you to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bells, um, leave your comments at the bottom, make sure and subscribe to Drive Mix Game. Dexter throws it down just under 1,000 subscribers. Kick over there. Usually when I do this, people heed my call. I'm freaking telling you, I don't do this very often. I understand it's an ask of my audience or at least the few thousand that come in and enjoy my message and get it. They get the fact that being independent is the only way to go. Falling in line with a bunch of lemmings, with a bunch of minions, and becoming a sheep over your entire life, you'll look back and regret being a sheep, sheep and not being a freaking rhino, man. Be one of those people that lead out front. Be independent with your thinking. If you find a problem with highly on holdings, then don't invest in it. Don't invest in it because of your own conviction, not because I've got you excited or because I'm a bull on the company openly disclosed that I'm a bull on the company and I'm excited about the prospects going forward. Think for yourself, okay? Don't let others influence your decision, man. Leave your comments at the bottom of the video, strike up the discussion about where we think we're going in 2022. Remember, 2021 was the year of building the team, solidifying the EX product. It was the year that institutions continued to sink their meat hooks into this company. Stock analysts <laughs> come out with their $5 price targets just to arbitrarily drive the stock down so that institutions can do what the statistics are showing that they're doing. And that's accumulating this particular company that has an extremely bright future in their vision of helping the planet going forward, making it a safer and a cleaner place to live. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to the message. And good luck in your investment future.